All aboard, all aboard for another Saturday, Chitima Stimela. Please say hi to us. Let us know where you're watching us from. It's always a pleasure to have you here with me. We have our special guest already here with us. Hello, Auntie Mary Olga. How are you? Hello, hi. Hello. <laughs> Good. So, Auntie Mary Olga, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a rundown of what happened during the week whilst you mute yourself, and then we'll ask you to come back and it will be all about you in a second. Okay. So, as I always like to do, I always like to start off the week, uh, the sex segment, by talking about what happened in the week. The week was a very interesting and engaging week. Thank you so much. So many of you engaged with us. What games did you like playing? I games. I'm no farira. Ana fish, fish. Ana wish you. Ana ara. Iwa ah makata rama games akawanda. Shandi chaita. I'm going to read some of the games that all of you guys just told me that you loved playing with us. So thank you so much. We really appreciate that engagement. Please continue to engage with us because that is how we grow our page. So I'm looking for the post that I put in there. And if you didn't comment on the post, please go and comment and tell us what games you liked to play wow we did get engage a lot this week i can't even find the post two seconds um okay yes there we go so uh hands country i used to like playing country ghana knows your country comment section that would be great there's too many games here and the bakery so apparently bakery who knows the game bakery <laughs> so it's not actually about baking bread actually it's a game that is called bakery it's like almost like baseball if i'm not mistaken so no uh gonna tomato Tomato, fl my flower. You guys, you really, really just gave us so much engagement. So we really appreciate you engaging with us on our page. The page, our family is growing. The Dawana and Friends family is growing. So support, uh, you know, you're sharing the link, you're liking the link, and we truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Another exciting, uh, ah, Mr. Essex. Hello, Auntie Maputi. Thank you so much for telling us where you're watching us from. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're just going through how the week was. A very, very exciting development happened. And I'm going to show you the video first before we talk about it. So here we go. Nane vanji vavo, na vose vachatongo, mushore mavo, di chiite jose, iji pamotemo. Ini magi chapman, dino tsiza no moyo wangu, wose kuti di chave mtigiri, ano vimbika uye, akatendeka, wamambo kazi Elizabeth. Nane vanji vavo, na vose vachatongo, mushore mavo, di chiite jose, so that was one of the highlights of the week where Maggie Chapman took her oath in Shona 
uh, is the member of parliament called Scotland. So I'm just going to ask our special guest, Auntie Mary Olga. Auntie Mary Olga, would you be confident to accept an award or a position in our native languages, whether it's Shona, Devele, Chimanika? Would you be confident? Um, I think I'm working on it. I, I think that yeah. would be the the true answer i think i think our brains have been um so whitewashed that uh, we have to think and uh, about it and kind of almost like psych up for that and be brave but what yeah. i liked i was so so impressed by the fact that she was able to do that but i knew that it's easier for her to do it her being a white lady and yeah. And had it been, because I, I saw social media arguments about, well, what's so special about it? If mm. a, a black woman had done it, it wouldn't be special. And my take on that was it would even be more special because to rise up and actually do that takes a lot of courage, especially with people from my generation. Maybe mm. the younger generation, it may be a different call, but I think for our generation, being able to do that proudly actually takes a lot. Yeah, And as I speak today, maybe it will come out why it is actually harder work for us to do that. I can't wait for you to give your talk, Auntie Mary Olga. But yes, for uh -huh. me, I would always be worried. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh, did she really have to do it in Shona? But it was just nice to see Maggie doing it. And I hope more people are inspired to do it. And this is why we are so inspired to do Ndawana and Friends bantu clan because we want yeah. um our young generation our children our nephews and mm -hmm. nieces to be able to speak our language you know yeah. confidently and not to be embarrassed about mm -hmm. where they come from so um i'm still gonna go through the rest of the week and then auntie mary olga you'll be in the hot seat um bantu clan story time in Gubayengano is on the 29th of may so if you haven't registered for your free ticket on event right please 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 do so go get your ticket we are moving we are in time my games we are winning my quizzes and you stand a chance to win one of these so it will be your choice in google and gandotina we are now rudo or story time with grandma and rudo and you also get a chance to win this amazing shona ebook and this book talks so it teaches you how to say some of the words and some of the numbers in sean so to stand the chance please make sure you go get your ticket hi uncle simba clive all the way from ct ct is cape town thank you so much please say hi please give us a like let us know where you're watching us from finally for the week australia thank you so much for your support you are buying the books you are giving us feedback about how excited you are about the books that they are now in australia so if you're down under make sure you get yourself a book a let's learn basic shauna and let's learn basic Ndebele. these are easy to follow resources that help you on your language learning journey you know it's very easy very colorful nice graphics to just help you with that anyway so that was the highlight of the week so so now we have someone I consider my sister, my friend, my counselor, my everything. And that is Auntie Mary Olga. Auntie Mary Olga, welcome, welcome, welcome. Mauya Tinom Gamchirai. I wa my tazenu. I susurufaru runesu. So yes, I'm so so excited to be here. Um uh and yeah it's uh, what you're doing is amazing um and uh, as you see you're not only just teaching the younger kids you're also teaching us like you know just like i said um we also have to work very hard in appreciating our own language and being proud of not just appreciating it but being proud of it and 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 not being embarrassed because that's been uh th that's what we've been taught uh 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I always put the comments of everybody. All right. Okay. You know, everybody takes the time to say hi or put a comment. I always like to put that so that, you know, we appreciate people engaging with us. Mm -hmm. So, Auntie Mary Olga, are you ready to be in the hot seat? <laughs> well, as well as, as, as ready as can be, I guess. <laughs> okay. Be, so kind, be very kind. Be kind. I'll be mm -hmm. very kind. <laughs> which part of Zimbabwe are you from? Okay. Which part of Zimbabwe? I, gosh, that's kind of, that's a very long, I'll try and make it very short. Okay. I, um, my family is originally from Gutu because I am Mjera Gumbo. So all the Gumbos, all of them are all related, no matter where they are from currently, but we all originate from Gutu. Uh, we are called Mavitori. So we are Karangas, but that's not where we call our village. Kumusha Kwedu Inini currently is Kutama. So for the Kutama, yes, yeah, so that's where Bob comes from. But there's a story again. That's not even Bob's village. It's Bob's mom's village because okay. his mom is a Gumbo. So um, his dad asked to build there. So that's how he's become um, his village because his dad married um, a Gumbo. Yeah. Wow. So do we have yeah. Gumbos in the audience? If you're Elmira Gumbo, please let us know. <laughs> and if you're from Gutu, your own person is in the hot seat today. Yes. Vittori, welcome, welcome. Yes. <laughs> Andy China, Uncle Julius. Andy na Uncle Julius, go to my rural area as well. So there you go. You got someone in the audience there. For there you, you go. So, but unfortunately, I do not, uh, I've never been to Gutu because uh, it, we're talking of probably five or so generations before myself, no, more than five actually, before me actually um, were in Gutu. So there was a journey, which I don't have time to talk about here, but my, my grandfather's father uh, was raised in Kutama. So his father migrated from Musani, Musana, Musana. but you know, there is a journey which I'm also aware of. So I mean, I was a curious child, so I know the journey and the generations and how they then ended up in Kutama. But my grandfather's father came to Kutama as a young boy. Yeah. Fantastic. So we've got Fantastic. a comment here yeah. from Auntie Maputi. She says Gumbo is a very common surname in Plum Tree mm -hmm. among mm -hmm. the Ka Makalanga. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank mm -hmm. you very much, Auntie Maputi, for letting us know about that. So yeah. you've already told us where you're from. You've told us you're too poor. Yes. Where were you born, Auntie Mary Olga? Where or when? Where? Where? Okay. All right. I was okay before I answer the where part. I want to talk about when I was born. Okay. I was born, yes, I was born in um, in the rainy seasons, uh, which is called Jija in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So yeah. that was in November time, and um, this is quite significant, I guess, in the story of how why I ended up being born there actually. So um, my mom was raised in a in a mining town called Sutton, which is in Mashonaland. Sunderland West? Yeah, Sunderland West. Yeah. And the father was a teacher there at the mine. But during the, um, the, the rain season, the mom would go to the village to, as you know, most families did, probably just to supplement, supplement income. So the mom was a stay-at-home mom. So my grandma, who I call Gogo, used to go to, um, to their village to all the rain, to, throughout the rainy season. And so... My mom was giving birth during the rain, the rain season, so ended up going. Um, so I ended up being born um, at a little village clinic called Masiarwa Clinic, and that is near Kutama. Um, so uh, as I don't know if any of you know that, that traditionally a woman would go from where they've been married to their own um, family of origin to give birth there for their first child especially. And the reason was um, so that they can have enough rest because um, th there was this probably unspoken rule that um, the daughter-in-law is overworked, I think, when they go to their in-laws. So I think to prevent the problems and to get enough support um um daughter, well young pregnant girls and ladies the first time they would go and give birth at their moms yeah, so, 
Is that what they call us? Yes, yes. So there was actually a process that was happened for Sungira. So they would then give you back to your family so that everything would happen there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. 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 No, fantastic. Thank you, Uncle Julius. Yeah. And uh, a warm welcome from Auntie Cindy. Uh, Uncle Julius just said, yes, uh, Masungiro. Masungiro, thank mm. you. Yes, you'd go to your parents for your firstborn to give birth to support mm. as the first child. Thank you, Auntie Florence, for that. Okay, so that is what happened. You are a Jijanguba, a Jija baby. Yes, yes, my Gamba baby, yes. <laughs> okay, so and you were born to Mashona Land West, where mommy is from. Um, yes, so it is, yes, Mashona Land West. So it's uh, it was the clinic was called Masiarwa. It actually still exists now, actually. Ah, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Mashona Land West, I don't know if people can see it on our map, but it is there. Kumsoro Uko. Is it clear, Auntie Mary Olga? Um, I I can just about see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Mashona Land West is um the Chinoy areas, yeah. uh Karoi, Zimba. Um, kind of bordering on Kado Marish, I think, before yeah. you kind of start going into the Midlands, I think. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. So, what was it like growing up in Zimbabwe for you, Auntie Mary Olga? What was your experience? Oh, gosh. My experience was very eclectic, I would say. I would say I had, I, I lived everywhere. Um, I, so my parents, well, divorced when I was two. So the greatest influence in my very early years would have been my mom's mom. She's a very, she's a big personality. So I think that's the person I kind of identified with a lot. Right. And she is originally from um, Buruve, uh, which is, which are, um, uh, what do you call it? Makore Kore. So even my 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 language was quite influenced very early on with kind of my um, yeah. uh, words and undertones. And but then when I was seven, I then moved to my dad's side of the family. Um, again, kind of still in the Mashonaland uh, West. So I lived with my granddad and my grandmom from my father's side. Uh, yeah. Both parents remarried. So, uh, yeah, so most of my upbringing then happened on my father's side with my uh, paternal grandparents, who, again, I don't know what was it with mine. So my granddad was a um, um, uh, director of human resources or something for Alaska Mine, which is near, just, just outside of Chinoy. So, yeah. yeah, so most, so because of, I guess coming from a separated family, I ended up going to boarding school from very, very, very early on. So most of my exciting experience as a child were in boarding school. So from primary school for about eight, I think. Okay. Um, so I am vers very versatile, I guess, because I've had to learn to live with that is from a very uh, early age where people are coming from different backgrounds. So I'm able to relate with anybody and everybody. Yeah, and, and and I guess having a curious mind as well just can, yeah. it, it was very helpful. So I was able to learn a lot. Yeah. What games did you like playing when you were young? What were the games that Auntie Mary Olga used to play at boarding and her upbringing? Okay. All right. Okay. So unfortunately, this will answer. This will kind of contribute to what I was saying um, with uh, with Maggie's um, Shona um, off. Yeah. So, yeah, so I went to a multi race well, by then, um, schools that were only for white people, by then, they were now called multiracial schools. So, black people were, and other races were now allowed to enter into those schools. So, it just felt, it felt like a privilege when you're going to those schools, just like yeah. maybe now, it is a privilege to go to a private school. Yeah. So, we were not allowed to speak Shona in, um, when you're in residence or when you're in the class. Yeah. So it meant, so, so I think some of these, so somehow then you start to unconsciously start to think Shona is inferior mm. to, to English. Um, there were upsides to that, that you then speak um, English well and, you know, there's advantages to it. But I think from um, an identity point of view, um, 
it becomes a bit more difficult. But my grandparents or my granddad, especially, he was very, very particular about speaking whatever language you decide to speak, to speak it well. So I speak Shona so brilliantly. Um, and um, and he was also particular as well about how you spoke in English. So he made sure you didn't mess about with phonics and said, don't mess with the white man's language. So he'd make you speak English properly, but also encourage and make sure that you speak your Shona properly as well. So, yeah. um, but anyway, so games that we played then in boarding school were mostly influenced, I think, by um, the English, um, yeah, so they were mostly English games. And then I guess as we got to, when I got to the end of primary school, there was, it was becoming more black, the school. So uh, then games like Maflau, like you're saying, uh, what you were mentioning earlier, were kind of introduced. Um, uh, but because you're doing it in English, you're speaking in English, uh, instead of saying my weed way, you'll be saying, well, we're playing house. So, <laughs> so yes, you're still doing the same thing that other people are doing, but you're just calling it different names. Um, but uh, when I was younger, I guess before I was five, I did play proper my and that was, that, that was amazing, I guess. Um, but after that, um, it was all, um very Englishized. Wow. Yes. Well, so what did you become when you grew up. So playing all those games and the exposure that you had at, at schools and stuff, mm -hmm. what ambitions did you have? I wanted to be a performer. So if there was anything that was uh, that was being done, like we you know when we had like um lip syncing competitions or whatever talent uh, competitions so I was just yeah. always on the forefront of that I didn't like school at <laughs> all I preferred to play and yes I preferred to play I was probably more creative um even though I was good in school um I just preferred things that were more creative and and hence I liked I liked singing I wasn't good at it but I just liked singing and performing and dancing anything that was kind of creative. But you know, again, you know, every time I mentioned that I wanted to be a singer, there was no evidence that I could sing. So of course that was crushed. Uh, anytime I said I wanted to be a performer, then I'm like, can you show us a performer who's making it? And then yeah, like, we have evidence apart from people that were in America, like Madonna and so on. So, yeah, yeah. and again, so that didn't work very well for me. So I guess if I was in a different place, I would probably would have been a performer. But yeah. then because of my experiences of um, um, like being moved about being taken away from my mom's side or even the, the, the separate, the divorce and both parents remarrying and myself leaving away. And then my dad, I think as soon as I moved to my dad, mom's dad side, my dad died actually. So, so there was a lot of loss throughout my, my, my childhood. So I was drawn, I guess, to just wanting to understand um, mm. how the mind works. So I was, yeah. I was just always deep in wanting to understand things uh, above the surface. And I think yeah. that was coming from the many traumas that I experienced. So yeah. I never thought at the beginning of, um, I guess, yeah, for a long time, especially in primary school, all I ever wanted to do was perform. Um, yeah. But as I grew older, I think I was kind of drawn now to wanting to understand the mind, like I said, yeah. and wanting to be um, particularly wanting to be a criminal psychologist or a criminologist. Wow. I was so fascinated with crime. I don't know why. Um, but um, yeah, that's, that's I think, what I, okay. where I wanted to go. A few, a few guests that we've had on the show have mm -hmm. expressed that when they were growing up, they wanted to be mm -hmm. very artistic they wanted to be performing yeah. they wanted to do something in performing arts and i guess mm -hmm. it, in our upbringing yourself my mm -hmm. age groups our parents really didn't encourage it because no. said, there wasn't anyone role model mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. said, okay mm -hmm. you can doctor nurse and police yes, and stuff. Yes, yes, so yes, I, yes. that's fine so yeah. Do you want me to show your video first about what you became or do you want to talk us through what you became first and then your video? What do you want us to do? I can start with speaking maybe. Then okay. maybe well, there may be no reason to, to show it in the end. I don't know. Yeah, so um, when I was 16, my mom died as well. 
You see, so I think that's when the the deeper need to connect with the soul and the psyche kind of started as well. So um, I then started knowing that there's something called psychology actually, and and then I wanted to be a psychologist. But I guess well, the journey to being a psychologist is a very difficult one. So uh, so the compromise to that was um, coming to England to do mental health nursing. So, which is how I ended up in UK. So I came to university to, to do a mental health nurse training. And, and then I actually realized that I actually liked doing that. So for a while, I actually kind of stuck with it. And then I went back to uni and then started, and then I did um, a Bachelor of Science in Interprofessional Practice. So that included kind of a lot of therapies within uh, and counseling within um, my training and particularly on domestic violence. So actually my thesis was on domestic violence, why people, uh, why people don't leave or why particularly women don't leave abusive relationships. Um, so, so yes. So right now, what I have become is not a psychologist, but I have kind of uh, drifted into doing. Um, Says sorry for your the loss of your mom. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words, um, Maputi. Um, so yes. Yeah, so I have um, um, kind of drifted away from the medical model because it's what nursing is, isn't it? So into just wanting to um, learn more about therapies. So the work that I do currently is mainly influenced by compassion focused therapy, which is um, the, the use of compassion towards the self to then find healing. It also yeah. borrows from other older schools of, uh, sorry, schools of therapy um, right. in its, uh, in how it, it kind of helps you to heal. Yeah. So um, I, I help people really to find themselves, to learn to do away with with um, this. Sorry, yeah, I know the pain of losing uh, a mom. Sorry for the loss. Oh, thank you very much, Julius. Sorry, maybe I should stop reading so I can carry on and not distract myself. No, so yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I help people Yes, yeah, so I became a coach as well. So during, um, 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 I guess, my journey, I then stumbled upon coaching or I got trained at work, actually, uh, in coaching. And I was like, damn, this is what I want to do, actually, mm -hmm. because it almost frees you, it liberates, because the thing with therapy is it is very rigid. So you have to choose a school of therapy to follow, like psychoanalysis or psychodynamic or CBT, you know. So yeah. it, then you become a specialist in that. And right. because I'm very, I don't like being put in the box. So that was just, I, I thought this is special. It just allows you to work with the person and borrow from anything, work with what the person needs right there, right, right now. And because I would had kind of uh, brief trainings in probably all different schools of therapy, I thought this is perfect for me, I think. I will be a coach. So I, I, I then now run, um, so I, I run training sessions for people uh, uh, almost, um, how do I do it? I simplify um, psychological and therapeutic terminologies. I simplify them at the simplest form, digestible form by the average mind so that people can heal themselves slowly. They can, um prep themselves to be more resilient so right. that it doesn't lead to breakdown and then needing full-blown therapy in the future yeah. so i i work from a more um uh, uh preventative uh mindset measures rather than waiting for things to really go wrong and then somebody then needing um uh, therapy yeah. So, so yeah. So, I uh, so I've trained in a lot of things, including um, a neuro linguistic programming, uh, mindfulness. I'm a mindfulness practitioner. Uh, like I said, the um, compassion focused therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, solution focused therapy, and counseling skills in domestic violence. So I'm quite equipped. Um, and so I use everything. Oh, yeah, and my uh, mental health uh, training as well. 
has kind of helped as well. In it helps in what I do as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's brilliant. So, that's fantastic. Yeah. You're using your skills from I feel mm -hmm. like your personality from your upbringing. Mm -hmm. really merges and mm -hmm. syncs really well with the career that you do now. Yeah. Yeah, no, so well done. I mean, I, I attend your Thursday sessions and I find them very helpful, you know. So um, if anybody wanted to know more about Mary Olga's Thursday sessions, do you want to tell us a bit more about your Thursday sessions? Yes, yeah, so, so it's called, so it's a platform that I, or an initiative that I kind of started recently. Um, uh, after the lockdown, I thought, let me offer a free uh, platform where people can tune in whenever they can, but it runs every Thursday at night, uh, sorry, at 7 p.m. London time. And there we, we go through different um, um, aspects of life and uh, mind and emotional difficulties that people may have. And so things like, so currently our theme actually is um, uh, talking about attachment styles, because what attachment styles are is determines how you're going to respond in relationships, how you're going to um, um, a function in a relationship. So if you don't know what your attachment style, for instance, you're not going to be um, able to know what, how you um, want to be loved or how you love. And not knowing also your partner's attachment style means that you're just kind of working blindly together. But knowing such things will help you understand that, oh, I may have a different attachment style to my partner. That's why they behave in this way, because each attachment style people in those attachment styles kind of behave the same way. So the platform really is called Project Prepared Minds. So it's just there to prepare your mind for um, uh, for just crap that happens in the world. So yeah. you are resilient. Sorry for you, for not using it. But no, what I um, would say also is the fact that we don't talk or mm. have a lot of therapy in our culture in our Zimbabwe yes, yes. so it's very interesting in these sessions mm. because it's a lot of Zimbabwean women yeah. we're opening up and mm. I can tell it's almost like a foreign concept it is and that's why I'm oh, sorry yeah. and that's why I keep it simple so that and we don't even want to call it therapy because as soon as you say the T word people will 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 that's be very yeah. Yeah. yeah, defensive, and they don't want to be part of that. So yeah. it is, um, yeah, just, just getting to know about these concepts that you would learn in therapy, but learning it in a very lighter level. Yeah. We're yeah. still going deep. I mean, you can um, attest to that. You've been there. So things like, you know, setting boundaries. Like tonight, I've yeah. been hired somewhere to talk about setting boundaries to reduce stress. Uh, but, you know, we've already done that and I, you were you attended all those uh, boundary yeah. setting ones and as you know when you set boundaries or know how to set boundaries or why you're not setting back knowing why you're not setting boundaries it just helps you yeah. to then reduce your stress because boundaries are all about protecting yourself yeah and yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah honestly like if you want i i encourage everybody to attend uh these sessions by auntie mary olga because i've learned so much uh from my african upbringing setting boundaries even today feels like a foreign concept like I, I feel bad for setting boundaries so but by doing these sessions i'm learning could you know when i say i don't want that i don't want that and i have every right to say i don't want that you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even if everybody else thinks i'm wrong it's how mm -hmm. i feel about it and yeah, yeah. i really want to encourage everybody to attend um the session so auntie mary olga before we go into your favorite ngano or a story mm -hmm. you want to tell us or a lesson mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to read some comments here because people have just given us some really amazing comments. Thank you, everybody that has been commenting. You know, Uncle Julius, um, Uncle Michael. Welcome, Uncle Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, Shumba Kadzi and Auntie Maputi said, sorry for your loss. You know, Auntie Maputi saying, well done for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Auntie Dorothy. You said, uh, choo choo. Yes, all aboard, all aboard. Uh, Auntie mm -hmm. Maputi says, God bless you. For using your talent freely our professions tend to be our calling so yes thank you very much auntie maputi for that that's very very true and then auntie florence said i think it's a black thing about mental health and therapy being a stigma 
Exactly. So that is one of the things that I really enjoy about your sessions. Um, Auntie Mary Olga, thank you, Auntie Florence, for that point. So, Auntie Mary Olga, without further mm -hmm. ado, please, mm -hmm. what are you going to share with us today? <laughs> okay. So, I guess um, um, I thought of Nganos and I thought, I couldn't, I couldn't really find, I couldn't uh, quite remember. Uh, any. So then I thought, okay. Um, I, I, then I thought of an experience that I had. Remember I said my grandma, my mom's mom, was kind of the earlier um, uh, influential person kind of in my life. And she was such a big character. So you, you couldn't miss her. You, you, you would have to just um, be influenced by her. So anyway, so she was from Guruve, which is... Um, um, the Makore Kore speaking. So for those that may not know, um, the Mashonaland part of Zimbabwe has five um, dialects, I think, that there may be kind of subdivisions of that, but the main five ones are uh, Kore Chikore Kore or Ma Kore Kore, as the people are referred to. And then you've got the Zezurus, which are probably kind of uh, in the central, then you've got the Karangas, which are from Gutu and some part of Midlands, uh, Mashingo and some part of Midlands, which is where I said we are actually originally, originally from. And then you've got the um, uh, Mutare, what do you call the Mutare one? Mutaris. Um, Manika, yes, who are from Nikoland, which is Mutare and the surrounding yeah. areas. Yeah. And then so. What's the fifth one? Oh goodness, I know there are five. Um, the Zuru, Manika, Mishkore Kore. Gosh, Karanga. Sorry? Karanga. Karanga, oh yes, no, no, no. Yeah, Karanga, yes, so Karanga, uh, Zuru, Mishkore Kore, Manika. There's still something missing though. Gosh, we've already said Manika, but anyway, let me not hold myself back with it. So anyway, so my grandma was from, deep down in Guruwe, uh, and uh, somebody said Ndau. Um, so I'm not sure where the Ndau's are from. Um, are they, the Ndau's, are they bordering uh, boundaries in Africa is an oxymor? <laughs> yeah, I'll call to any time and you have to entertain and fit them. Um, so, um, sorry, let me not distract myself. So the, um, the Kore Kores, um, kind of are from Guruwe, that I think the central place is Guruwe, and it kind of just goes all the way to Karoi and Kariba for those that know maps. Um, so yeah, so she is from where the, the center of what Makore Kore is are from, and it's actually called Spuriro. So I'm not sure whether it's called Spuriro as uh, did the, colon, the colonial um, settlers. I don't know whether they're the ones who called it Spuriro um because uh they couldn't say groove maybe i don't know but anyway so she's from a sacred place called spurido so when i was about five i remain i remember her taking me on a trip to um to her village so it was a proper proper village you know because my village is in time i'm very modern so it was nothing i'd ever seen before so it was so it's quite uh it was quite an ex an experience and again kutama is um um yes abiangu uh, that is uh, my my people i uh, remember those words yeah so it actually sounds very foreign like to somebody who speaks azuru or something yes yeah, so the, the words are so yes it's so exciting especially if you if you speak to somebody who's straight up uh kore kore. so yes yeah, so kutama is a christian influenced village so and quite a modern village so so Going there was just an eye open and exciting time as well. So um, got on a bus. I said I was around five. Very a curious child I was. So I remember us getting off the bus, off the bus rather. We got off the bus and and I asked why we were getting off the bus. Then I was told, oh, because of that bridge, that that bridge is sacred. So they needed so some people from the bridge. I'm not know who uh, would then start to. Um, give honor, I think, to the spirits so that the bus can pass through safely without the without the bridge collapsing or something to that effect. I can't quite remember now because I was little. And then, as as uh, the, the, whoever is kind of doing the um, the the ritual, whatever it is, the bus would then slowly go past the bridge. 
until it crosses and everybody else then follows the bus on foot and then you then aboard the bus again. And so when I was thinking about telling the story um, uh, this week for Mangano, I thought, um, was it because this bridge was so weak? So this is me now doubting the whole <laughs> the whole process. <laughs> was it because this bridge was weak and people had to come <laughs> off to to lighten the load of the the load of the of bus and uh, or really was uh, were there kind of lots of um, uh, spiritual things still going on around that time because a lot of other areas were not sacred anymore. And so when we got there, so we got on the bus. So I was having a conversation with a friend uh, of mine, and he said, um, oh, actually, um, I had an experience in that area. He was actually an older guy by then. He's my age. But he was an older guy by then. He was a mechanic, and he was also driving in, in, a, in a kind of pickup truck, a 4 by 4 pickup truck, with another mechanic who was South African. As they were going downhill, he says, the car is just supposed to free flow. But he said he didn't make any sense mechanically why he needed to engage a gear as if he was going uphill. And he said, so I'm sure, truly says, uh, their engineering minds were telling them that uh, this shouldn't be happening. But in the end, what they concluded was maybe there could be some kind of magnetic force coming again, kind of wanting to disprove the fact that um, these traditional uh, African things actually happened. Uh, he said, so what they concluded, both of them, uh, in that car was maybe there was some magnetic force or field because they were going kind of through mountains. So they were looking, um, even now in Rusapa, we have a, a bridge like Adaro. Yes, so so there are places where, it, you know, people disappear, like in the Nyangas, mm -hmm. tourists disappear and stuff like that because mm -hmm. they've done things that they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And like in Chinoy, where I grew up, at Chinoy Caves, apparently for a long time, people were told not to throw stones when you go to visit there because if you throw the stone, it will never go across the water it would kind of just drop right at the edge of. So again, because the water is very blue in Genoa you know, you know, Caves, the explanations are that there's gravity thing going on. So the stone cannot cross over. The water is always like this this blue, this that never changes color no matter what. Right. You know? Um, so again, it could be the, the kind of stone that's underneath it, or it could be, I don't know, this it, it probably is a magnetic field thing, or it could be just a spiritual thing. I don't know. So yeah. so yes, yeah, so I, I found that quite exciting. Um, just even when I got to the village, the houses were still the very traditional, you'd sleep in a heart thatched heart around and it was quite exciting for a child who had never kind of experienced that yeah. and i think after about three days the bread that you'd have carried there would have um, <laughs> finished so yeah. you'd then have tea uh, with um sweet potato or with manuchu or something so it was it was an amazing exciting time which was different yeah. um yes just like the bermuda triangle somebody said so yeah so so these places probably do have magnetic forces, which yeah. the locals would have um, maintained and seen as um, a sacred. And why not? If yeah. it just happens in those areas and not others. Um, so, so yeah, that is my kind of traditional linked kind of story. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. It's mm. I love it. It's different, you know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so, what lesson would you like to share with you know? Anyone, young people, old people, parents, anyone, what lesson have you learned personally that you'd mm -hmm. like to share? Um, I guess keeping with the theme of what you do here in Dawana, um, I would say le relearning about um, valuing your uh, culture or who you are is a journey and i think we we need to be less judgmental about it like mm. you know like we accept we you know we both myself and you uh, at the start of this session we did agree or we did we did say that actually it would take a lot of guts for us to stand yeah. up there and speak in shona and stuff and yeah. that comes from an eroded um sense of value for our culture and and like i was saying i went to a school where you'd be punished if you were 
uh, heard speaking your vernacular language. Yeah. So you then have these unconscious beliefs about superiority um, the English language has over your own. Yeah. So just having, I guess, these platforms that will slowly erode that because yeah. it took us years to learn that. So if we um, are able to come and showcase these beautiful experiences, I guess, that are related to our cultures as as nice and normal and not evil or um, yeah. satanic and, and actually just embracing and letting people know that we actually had very happy childhoods in Zimbabwe. And and I guess being at the forefront of showcasing the positive parts of Africa, yeah. or parts of uh, our upbringing, the positive, and not just talking about the, the, the bad things that happened to us. Mm. So if for myself, for instance, I've had, there's been a lot of trauma in my life. And, but I embrace that beautifully because I wouldn't be the person I am today. I wouldn't be effective in the work that I do because yeah. I understand nearly everything there is to understand about pain. Yeah. So I am not talking from a textbook or from what I've seen in other people. I am combining my own experiences and actually really okay. knowing how it feels from um, a, a personal uh, level and making it easier to understand when a client presents with um, with whatever problem or trauma that they have. But I would say it's a journey and I like uh, what you're doing because it, it, it you know, it, it helps us raise our kids because I think our kids here in this country are so, so, I call them makaradi, mm. you know, that they don't quite fit. Yeah. They're not English, are they? No. And they're not... African, African, are they really? You know, no, you know no. so actually knowing actually that and giving them that room to, to be able to embrace both cultures um, and, and not having to make them to choose. Yeah. But they can never choose our culture if they what they're being taught is only from um, um, the narrative that's coming from the English side that they see in their school, in the books and so on, which like someone has, uh, someone, uh, someone has written before that um, uh, we'll never know the truth if the, like the story is always being told from the yeah. hunter's perspective yeah. and exactly. not from the hunted or the lion. Exactly. Um, so yeah. we need to rise up. So instead of waiting and just saying Black Lives Matter, we need to step up and start mattering, which yeah. is what I thought Maggie was doing in that video. He was just, she was saying, you know what, Shona matters too. Exactly. Right? So we need to rise up also and say, um, I matter, my culture matters, just yeah. like the Asians do. They they don't wait to be made to matter, they just come out mattering. They're like, yes. no, my book matters, so I'm gonna wear it, you know, deal exactly. with it. So so we need to be really working with that and um, and slowly and be, be kind to ourselves in the process and not shaming yeah. ourselves or shaming those that have not arrived where you already very arrived. True. Very yeah. true. Very true. Very true. As we tell you, eh? What am I do? You know, so that's shaming people. So yeah. make it make Shona so cool that people want to join in. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what Maggie has done is actually a very good thing. I know a lot of people uh, dismiss that, saying, "Do like, do what's so special about it?" But she's setting a trend that Shona matters. Shona because does if matter. somebody uh, was speaking Gaelic or whatever Scottish native thing in in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, you know, it's saying, yeah, you may have brought English into this, but my Gaelic matters. You see? It matters. <laughs> and it matters. So yeah. that's what Nick was doing, saying, well, my sure. native language matters, even though I'm butchering it with my accent, but it matters. No, yes, no. yeah. yeah, so right. I, I totally agree with you, sis. And one of the things that we do at Bantu Clan is no judgment. We never want any parents to feel judged. We don't want kids to feel judged. We just want you to come as you are. And mm -hmm. the fact that you know Moroi, Makali, mm -hmm. you've done amazing. Thank you. you. You know, no judgment. You lose mm -hmm. people when you start as you're saying, I'm going to say you. Yes, yes. Yeah, so no, yeah, totally, yeah. totally love it. And yeah. 
because of time, I just want to say mm-hmm. thank you. You're not yet going, but right. you have to end your hot seat. Thank you okay, so much. Right. You right. have right. been amazing. Mm-hmm. And thank honestly, you. I'm going to put onto Mary all these details in the description. Yes. If you want yes. to join and sign up to some of her sessions, mm-hmm. please, please, please do because they're very helpful. Yeah. And it doesn't matter at which level you're at. Yeah, yeah. You will still find it helpful for yourself. But okay. for now, yeah. No, okay, no. one minute, one minute. So yeah. yeah, so I am in the process of creating online courses because I cannot be there everywhere. And even my one-to-ones are, you know, fully booked and it's kind of just hard, hard work. So I am actually um, yeah, creating online courses so that it's just easier for people to access. And again, I will pass them on to, to you and uh, that one and friends so that you guys can come and uh, kind of sort your minds out if yeah. you so thank you yeah. no thank you so much thank you everybody thank you. thank you for the links i'm going to put each and every one of those links again for the um in story time Gubayengano. but for now we are doing happy birthday was it your birthday was it someone special's birthday this week let us know do you know anybody that had a birthday this week please tell us in the comment section i know that a few weeks ago it was was our auntie miriam's birthday auntie miriam our guest from two weeks ago it was a happy birthday so happy birthday auntie miriam from us your friends here at dawana and friends was it anybody else's birthday this week that you'd like us to give a shout out to was it somebody's birthday this week let me know let me know but yes so auntie miriam and anybody else that had a birthday we want to wish you a happy birthday we want to wish you long life and prosperity and good health thank you so much i'll wait for you a few more seconds if it was somebody's birthday otherwise we shall move on because we are running out of time nope that's fine that's fine. So happy birthday, Auntie Miriam. Oh, Sekuru Trevor. Yes, it was my Sekuru's birthday. Happy birthday, Sekuru Trevor from Vazukuru in USA and Dawana and friends. Happy birthday, Sekuru Trevor. Was it anyone else's birthday? Thank you, Auntie Maputi, for telling us that. Was it anybody else's birthday? Anyway, no worries. So As always, I always like to tell you about our books. Please, 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 please make sure you go get your Let's Learn Basic Shona, Let's Learn Basic Develop Physical Books and ebooks at southorders.com. The link was put here by South Orders. Let me look at that link. So, yeah, get yourself the South Orders book. Uh, Where is it? South Orders, if you're there. Oh, yeah, I found it. So, go get yourself the Let's Learn Basic. Shona, let's learn basic Ndevele at southorders.com and the ebook is there as well. You can also get the story time with Grandma and Rudo and Gubayangano Tinambuya na Rudo on southorders.com as well. So these are traditional Zimbabwean folk tales by Auntie Gladys Mapanda. She has been kind enough to do it in Shona and in Ndevele. Why? Because our culture matters as auntie mary olga said let us not disregard our own we need to start now embracing ours as well and we shouldn't have to pick either or we can just embrace both and then one of the books that you'll be able to win at the uh story time is this ebook uh by rurimi Amai. thank you very much for putting that up so that's the link over there you just go to www.rurimiwa Amai, it's an ebook, a really interesting book. You can learn how to say some of the things. It's got numbers, it's got words, it's got body parts. So this is a great, great, great resource for you to add to your library. Last but not least, we have my first book of Shana and Debele Words. This is by Felisa Creatives, and it's also a very beautifully thought out book it shows all the body parts and uh family members modes of transportation and it says it in three languages english 
Shona Isindebele. So you know what, help your kids with these interesting resources. And um, I'll put the link for Felisa Creative later on. And they also have done us my first Shona and Debele calendar book. And it's got all these interesting, um, beautiful graphics as well. And there's one here that Auntie um, Mary Olga spoke about about the Chinoy Caves. Let me see if I can find it. But you see, there we go, Chinoy Caves with the blue water, one of the tourist destinations in Zimbabwe. So you can also get this beautiful calendar there at Felisa Creatives. Listen, we have to do our best to have, so that our children embrace our culture, our children embrace who we are. And it's not about them picking sides, it's about them knowing that they have another side without further ado i just want to say thank you so much and give auntie mary all the, an opportunity to thank the audience and say goodbye before we log off so auntie mary olga if you unmute yourself and just say bye to the beautiful audience that will be great okay thank you very much everyone thank you for your contributions and thank you for your well wishes uh it's been a pleasure and i hope you've learned a thing or two uh, about my culture or my uh, journey. And I hope it's been inspirational in one way or another. And um, wish you all the best. And hopefully we'll meet um, or you'll come along to our Thursday platforms just to explore uh, what we have. Um, I promise you, Thank it you. is a good time. Always a good time. Always, always. always all right. Thank you very much. I wanna Thank you. Thank you so much, Auntie Mary Olga. Thank you so much, audience. You're always so supportive. I can't thank you enough. May God bless you all. I'm going to leave you with the video of our Ndawana and friends in Zimbabwe who did us that video dance. Hopefully, we'll see you again next week. Have a beautiful weekend. See you next time. Bye. Now